Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Sapphire Now. Headline sponsored by SAP HANA Cloud, the leader in platform as a service. With support from Console Inc., the cloud internet company. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hi everyone, we are live in Orlando, Florida for a special presentation of theCUBE at SAP Sapphire Now. It's theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Peter Burris. I want to give a shout out to our sponsors. Without them, we would not be here. SAP, HANA Cloud Platform, Console Inc., Capgemini, and EMC. Thanks for your support. Really excited to be here. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage, three days, over 40 videos, going to be hitting YouTube, siliconangle.com slash YouTube. Our next guest is Dan Lal, VP of SAP HANA Cloud Platform Product Marketing. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for having us. Thank you, John, you got all that out without a stumble. That was fantastic. <laughs> I memorized it. Um, <laughs> That's great. Without our sponsors, we wouldn't be here. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. now, thanks to you, and, and, and it's been a great um, um, support from you and your team. Really appreciate it. Um, welcome to theCUBE. Yeah, love being here. You guys have something very unique in, in how you bring a play-by-play, -play, but from an analyst perspective. Very, very unique. Someone called me Pat Summerall and uh, Peter John Madden yesterday, which is a great compliment because it highlights our ESPN And attack. I like it, it means I'm the better looking one. Although, exactly. Yeah, the NFL exactly. game day. But the game is on. Who's a guy? Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom, the cloud is here. <laughs> it's the whiteboard. Uh, but all seriously, we had a great conversation. And one of the things that's emerging out of the whole uh, HANA Cloud Platform ecosystem play is that it's really buzzing. And it's not like sizzle, but it's a steak on the grill yeah. as well. So there's a lot of meat on the bone. And the thing that we're seeing is that SAP is basically putting themselves out there with tech and not trying to do the land grab. Not yeah. saying, hey, we're SAP and this is all a marketing program to get more SAP share for our other stuff. Yeah. There's clear separation between SAP stuff, whether it's whatever the customers are buying, and then and an open way for developers, yeah. both SAP developers and now mainstream developers with iOS and Apple. So huge shift, um, and the ecosystem is super excited. So I got to ask you, how do you guys separate out the market? Explain for the folks out there how this all fits in, because the Honda Cloud Platform is more open, it's really non-SAP in a way. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And there's other clouds out there, and let's face it, you guys weren't getting the buzz. A little bit yeah. late to the party, and yep. You, yep. you got the product in good position right now, but you got Amazon out there. Azure, Microsoft was here, you know, doing relationships with you. You're partnering with Apple, IBM was on, Cisco, all the big guys are here working with you. Yeah, yeah. Separate out, out what it means. So let me back up, let me back up and give you all the, all the HANA buzzwords, and we've been, very confusing to the market on how we branded the different HANA products. So there's the HANA database, data management platform. We came out with that in 2011. Very similar to Oracle from a SQL interface standpoint. Very different from a technology standpoint. All in memory and everybody knows that by, by now. Then we have another initiative called S4 HANA. That's taking all of the applications porting them on to the HANA uh, data management platform. So that's the app stack. So business suite is now S for HANA. So data management with HANA, S for HANA, app stack. Then we have something called the HANA Enterprise Cloud. And that's just basically a managed service. You want to take your landscape, give it to our data center, let us manage it for you. For SAP stuff. SAP stuff, yeah, not, not, not any of the red stuff or anybody else's <laughs> apps, but. But SAP, some of the ex partner extensions? But some of the partner extensions, yes. And that has to be certified, but basically it's a managed service. So you want to give your data center over to SAP, guarantee that it'll run, we'll upgrade all of the apps and enhancement packs and that kind of thing. So that's HANA Enterprise Cloud. And then finally, HANA Cloud Platform is something different altogether. It really is our offer, open platform as a service. So, any of the applications that SAP is shipping today, whether that be Business Suite, S for HANA, Success Factors, Ariba, Concur, Cloud for Customer, you name it, can be extended or integrated using HANA Cloud Platform, okay? So HANA Data Management, HEC, uh, the managed service, S for HANA, new, the new app stack, HCP, really the extension platform for that SAP ecosystem, okay? Now I say that, it's an open platform, it's Java-based, can you believe it? It's not ABAP-based, it's Java-based, no JS, all open systems. 
We announced at, at, at the, the, the show that we're shipping uh, Cloud Foundry with no JS runtimes, uh, scripting languages like Ruby and Python and PHP and Go, databases like Mongo and Postgres and Redis. It's open systems, baby, right? All the and tools that they are offering exactly. are all Exactly, they in can do that, yeah. So any programmer under 30, we can, now, <laughs> we can now approach and have a conversation with. They don't have to learn a German programming language, right? <laughs> now, whether it's good or bad, it doesn't make any difference. It's open systems, right? And, and so that, that's kind of the, the, the framework of, of what we announced. And What's it you mean to developers? Okay, let's take that forward. Okay, yeah. open cloud platform, okay, great. Under 30, or just open source is so good now. I mean, all the Q&A, all the questions are on Stack Overflow and all these Node.js and technologies yeah. are all out to be reused. So that's, that's what people want. Okay, what's the impact to me? I'm the developer. What does it mean? What's in it for me? Do I have access to all the SAP stuff? I'm used to dealing with all these different tools to put systems together. That's the beauty, John, is all of those tools that you use as an open systems developer, you can now, through HANA Cloud, Cloud Platform, get to the back-end systems that we didn't expose before except through an ABOP stack, right? You don't have, you don't have to learn BAPIs. You don't have to learn ABOP. You can use your Java capabilities using uh, Eclipse if you want, if you want to do it uh, on, your, on, your, on your desktop device, or use a web IDE that's Java based, right? But you're exposing these through APIs exactly, and microservices? Exactly, exactly. Through either APIs or through integration services, through a direct connect back to the back ends. And we not only uh, expose data, but also processes as well. So you can take advantage of a process. One of the things we announced uh, this week was the API Business Hub. So now we're going to deliver a catalog of APIs where we'll publish into and an open system developer, developer can say, oh, what's with that management accounting services? That hooks back into s for hana I just need to call the API and take advantage of those management accounting services. Very cool, very so cool. So on the Apple relationship, which is an iOS based thing, the developer can then go to the enterprise customer, so let's take the ecosystem now. Okay, I'm a developer, I have a white space, I see some unique thing that I could, a problem that my customer has, that I could solve. Or I'm an entrepreneur and say, hey, you know, I have a unique idea, idea. I want to solve that problem. I code it, but I'm I might rely on SAP data, say in ERP. Yep. I could tap that. You can now and tap it. integrate it in seamlessly. Yes. And show it natively on an iOS device. That's what we're delivering through the HCP Software Development Kit SDK. So you're, a, you're, a, uh, you're an Apple developer today. Well, you could develop the next Snapchat or the, you know, some consumer to consumer app. But interesting, the bulk of Apple devices or the bulk of the devices in the enterprise are Apple devices. They're not Android devices. Yeah. Apple's done some work on that. Upwards of 75% are actually Apple devices. So now you're a developer, you want to get access to all of those different applications that SAP has delivered in beautiful 1990s master detail today. Well, I mean, you let's, get, uh, let's face it. I mean, we had this comment on the queue which we concur with. The user experience of enterprise software is dated and old and people are bringing their phones to work. That's really kind <laughs> of you to say dated and old, okay? <laughs> I would have said old and crappy, okay? <laughs> but, but, I mean, okay. yeah, but no one wakes up and says, hey, I can't wait to download my enterprise app yeah, my, and use my it on the weekend. Detail. I exactly. have to use it. It's like, it's like, yeah. it's like, it's like root canal. It's, you love it, zero, but you need it. You yeah, know, part you number 000743XP. <laughs> okay, so, so, now, so now they can get into all of those uh, processes w without having to know the back-end process. We, uh, we're gonna, through the SDK, we're going to expose all of those. Share some data on some of the onboarding. I know you had a lot of early adopters and now the program's ramping up. Yeah. We've talked over the past year and, and you guys are t tweaking the product, so you want to make sure the product was solid. That That's was right. key. That's and right. Might have been delayed a little bit, but the timing of the Apple announcements, yep. perfect. But I can imagine that the developers are excited because certainly um, in the ecosystem out there in Silicon Valley and beyond, there's a softening, there's kind of a bubble bursting, if you will, on the consumer stuff. So yeah. there might not be a couple more unicorns. There's a few unicorns that come along in every cycle of innovation, but the enterprise is hot. So the buzz on the street is the enterprise is hot. That's where you make money. And that's, that's right. As everyone works for a revenue model, you got to break even. So there's a big focus on that in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So is there an uptake um, that you can share, or any stats on the kinds of new onboarding that you guys are doing? 
Yeah, so just, uh, just this week we also announced that IBM is taking all of their mobile first for iOS applications. They're going to participate in the SDK and they're going to move all of their applications onto the HANA Cloud platform. They had a beautiful UI that they built for a hundred little mobile apps that were enterprise ready, but not enterprise connected. So now they're going to connect all those hundred uh, little apps like uh, Find and Fix and Parts Manager and that kind of thing. I can see the slogan now, enterprise ready to connect. Exactly. Connecting. Exactly, connecting. It's pretty decent validation yeah. of some of the things we're talking about here. Exactly. And, and the, the HCP play in it for SAP is that's the gearbox to get them back to all of the SAP apps, whether they be on-premise business suite, on-premise S for HANA, uh, workforce management with success factors and field glass. It's the gearbox to get them back to all of so those. So I got to ask the question, you're in product market, so you've got your, your, your eye on the prize and the market, you're forward facing, but also you got to work with the product teams and deal yep. with that. Um, do you see a window of opportunity right now because the timing of having the product ready with HANA Cloud Platform plus the Apple relationship and the IBM stuff which is more validation, a window opportunity with this, the wind is at your back, this yeah. window, you cut, you got a short window to kind of go out and win. Are you worried about that? Are you guys investing heavily now? Do you see it now at the time to throttle it up and pedal to the metal, straight and narrow, 90 miles an hour? You know, I actually see it as the wave is forming, okay? I don't think our customer base knows that much about HANA Cloud Platform. It really had its coming out party at Tech Wave last October, and now it's, have its, it's now exposed to the business uh, group. It had the techie outage, now it's the, the, uh, uh, the, the business outing. I see the wave starting to form, okay? And we got to catch the wave and we got to ride the crap out of it. And there's a lot of stuff on the product side we have to deliver. There's a lot more that we have to do for integrating into our existing systems. We have to provide uh, more, di not direct connects, we've already got that piece, but m more integration with the processes, right? I would say we're, we're, we're not all the way there yet. And so we have, to, we have to push our product our product management and engineering teams to do that. And that's not always easy at a big company like SAP that has all these different divisions building processes, right? And then the other hard part is, we got to make sure that our sales reps are introducing us into every single customer account as the gearbox, as the agility platform, right? So that's starting to happen. So I would say, I wouldn't even say we're on the wave yet. We're starting to catch the wave. So let me build on that. I got two quick, well two questions. I don't want to say they're quick, but here's the first one. Uh, here's what our CIO clients are telling us. One of the advantages of everything you said, platform, a lot of entry points, means that their business can pick their own roadmap for how they go to S4HANA. That's right. As opposed to having a single, one way, and that's the only way in. Yep. That'll extend the adoption cycle. Do you see that being a positive thing, ultimately, for not only SAP in getting this message and getting this product out, but also all the partners and the ecosystem to drive this whole thing forward? Let me answer the, the customer part of that first. Um, the way we have set up S4 and HCP is S4 is the core that you really don't want to touch that much, you don't want to customize that much, you don't want to extend, you do that in HCP. Why would you want to do that? Well, as we deliver new enhancement packs and we're delivering every couple of quarters on the S4 platform, every time you do a customization inside the app, when you have to upgrade, you got to do regression tests, you got to check the customizations against the new rev. It, it becomes, in technical terms, a hairball, right? It becomes a huge hairball. Take that off the, off, off the plate. Just do it on HANA Cloud Platform. And so that's, that's the customer angle to it. The partner angle to it is, is very simple, and it's a win-win for partners and for us. They can, and for customers as well. They can, they can build a little app on the platform, snap it into S4 or success factors or C4C and make it look like an app that's part of our SaaS application, okay? The customer doesn't have to provision anything. The customer takes a tile and puts it on their, on their success factor application. We win because they're consuming it on HCP. So right. we're monetizing that too. So the partner has an easy path, the customer gets something easy, we help monetize on that. It's a, it's a great story, and yeah. a lot of folks are looking for it. So for example, 
some of our clients are telling us, we are looking at uh, uh, the S4 platform, S4 HANA platform, we, or we came to it through analytics. So mm -hmm. here's an interesting question, Dan. You've got a lot of background in database. Yep. So the old way of thinking about building a database application is you didn't want to write an application required more than you know, 80, 90, 100 disk IOs. Yeah. Now we're talking about in-memory databases, common to organization, provide any number of different straightforward common interfaces back uh, from a view standpoint back to the application. Yep. But we're talking about what used to be, or the equivalent of hundreds of, you know, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of IOs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that mean to the types of applications that we're going to be able to build in the ecosystem over the course of the next few years? So, you're right in that all data is immediately available in memory, ready to go. But here's the cool thing that I think you were getting at. You can build a structure one time, you build a table structure one time. On top of that, you just build views, view logical views. And then your queries or your application looks at the logical view, right? Now logical views aren't something new, it was just, it was horrible to do it on a disk-based database, yep, right? Very you had difficult. to do tons of optimizations. In an in-memory database, it doesn't matter, it's all there. You just look at the logical view. So we're going to see people stacking up more and more and more logical views, specifically in the analytics ca uh, use case, we see that all, all the time. From a partner standpoint, they're going to build their table structure and then mix and match new different application types using logical views. And you know, in, in HANA we provide calc views and attribute views, so we, even, even better ways to do that. But the bottom you know? line is the way you get to that ability to take a tile and drop it into a system and add that functionality is because that underlying platform can support is there. that view in yeah. almost an unlimited way. Exactly. Whether the data is, is in HANA in the cloud or whether the data is still on premise through a direct connection back in the, in the existing HANA system on premise. Of course, right? unstructured data complicates the database equation, but also they have to coexist yep. with the schemas and the structured databases out That's there. That's right. Um, has that thrown a curveball at you guys at all, or not a problem at all with Honda? So, you know, we've got an answer for that with Vora. I don't know if you've talked yep. to any of the Vora folks, not but yet. you know, what Vora brings to the party is it brings in-memory capabilities. It's an in-memory indexer for Hadoop data. So instead of pointing your your SQL query or or building a MapReduce or using a, a Hive or one of those technologies, or a data lake, at, just say data, or whatever, lake. you just point it at Vora and it's already indexed in memory, right? So. Our plan and our hope is that soon Vora will be on the HANA Cloud platform. So that's just another piece Wave of technology. A view. It's another service that we provide for generating a view on top of Hadoop data. Yeah, that's right? key. So talk yeah. about the, uh, the ecosystem innovation, because one of the things I love um, in McDermott's opening keynote, and I love the term business model innovation, because mm -hmm. that just really speaks to a, a whole new level of innovation. Usually it's like tech innovation, yeah. we'd yeah. love to get yeah, disruptive yeah, yeah. enablers, platforms. At the end of the day, the application of the tools and platforms, however they're developed by yeah. whomever, impact something. Yeah, yeah. That's the business, right. that's the revenue. Right. The new, these new processes that are emerging. I mean, IoT is a great example. It's kind of an unknown yeah. process. It's hard to automate that workflow because it's evolving in real time. What innovations can you point to that, uh, that you see and that SAP sees as key um, mile markers, if you will, that shows that these things uh, are being innovated on the business model side with the, with the ecosystem. Yeah, I'll give you two examples. One that's kind of a, uh, just a speed up, and then I'll give you one that's a business model. So Hamburg Port Authority is the, is the Port Authority for Hamburg, the second largest port in Europe. And for them to keep up with the competition, they're going to have to double and triple in the next 15 years the amount of goods going through their port. They have nowhere to build out. They cannot make their port bigger, it's surrounded by a city. There's nowhere for them to go. So they're using HANA Cloud Platform to basically create a grid. They're creating a utility or a cell network grid of all the containers that are sensorized, all of the trucks that have uh, telematics information in the trucks, and they're also bringing in traffic information so that when the container comes in, they can bring the exact truck in that needs to get it 
in the right path into the port, okay? If you think about that, that's a cellular network. And that's what they've built using on a cloud platform. So that's, it, it's a, it's a semi-change in business so model minutes from a technology. Matter to them. Seconds matter to them, literally, right? The faster they can, they can match up the container with the truck that's going to move that container, the better off they, they gotta are. They got to clear the inventory. Sounds exactly. like a business problem. Exactly, <laughs> right? And think about it, they're probably going to uh, sensorize the ships as well. They're going to stage those guys coming in over time, right? What's so, the other example? The other example is really interesting. Uh, it's a small company in Germany that builds forklifts. There can be nothing more pedantic than a forklift. It picks up a pallet, it moves the pallet, it puts it down, right? Okay, so here's what this company has done. It's called Still Forklifts. They are using HANA Cloud Platform to match up their order system, which is an SAP, with the forklifts that are sensorized on HANA Cloud Platform so that the order system will send the order to get picked by the forklift. And the forklift and the order system have the maps of where everything is in the this warehouse. Is the clients order system. The client's order system, okay? And they've also now, they haven't done it yet, but they're working on a forklift to forklift integration sure. so that if this guy's over in this part of the warehouse, he has to pick something up over here, this forklift is over here, they meet in the middle, trade some, uh, trade some product, get it out to the docking station. So the, uh, the, the forklift is an IOT device exactly. to the order system. Exactly. And it, opens up the possibility of greater automation within the, within the warehouse floor. And they've changed their business model. They're no longer selling forklifts. They're selling pounds of goods moved within the warehouse, from in the warehouse to shipped. And they're billing on a monthly basis based on pounds of goods shipped. They're not selling forklifts anymore. Great example. That is pretty cool. So that's a complete shift. That's a business model shift. It's an wow. outcome shift. Yeah, They're absolutely. They're selling the outcome. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so. And they had to think differently about their business, right? You know, they had to think, we are not a forklift operator, we're, we're a goods we're a, a goods mover operator. Or, to your business model, we were a forklift operator, now we're a goods mover. Exactly. In, yeah. you know, in, an in-warehouse good mover. Exactly, exactly. That's a great example, and also it gives innovation because now, as the keynotes were saying, People are afraid to go out of business. And so the opportunity for the ecosystem is, put one of those guys at, at, at check. Exactly. Put them into check. If they don't move, you take their territory. Exactly. So it's a nice cycle. Exactly. SAP <laughs> wins on both sides. On both sides, <laughs> yeah. Very All right, cool. Dan, I got to get you the question. So, um, plans for this year, you got the Apple, um, you got the cloud platform, you have all this uh, goodness going on. What's the plans for the year? Uh, give us a, a taste of some of the things that you want to achieve this year out in the market, uh, yeah. and what KPIs are you looking at? Yeah, what are, we gonna talk, what are we going to be talking about this time next year? I think we're going to be talking about what did you guys do in the area of Cloud Foundry? Have you guys really delivered on your Cloud Foundry promise of going open source and moving toward portability? So next year, if we're fortunate enough to speak again, that's what I want you to ask me. Where are you guys on delivering Cloud Foundry, pushing open source, open development for developers even further, as we talked at the outset uh, of the interview? And then secondly, where, where are we on the API business hub? What is SAP doing to expose the, 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 the thousands of business services that we have to our customers? To be able to use the HANA Cloud platform with a catalog of business services that we're exposing to help them extend or modify or build yeah. out new applications. And new onboarding right. numbers, having numbers showing That's growth. right. Yeah. Now what that means from a, a revenue standpoint, it means you know, we got to double or triple our business next year. It, we're, we're not talking a 10%, 15% growth, we're talking an order of magnitude growth for our part of the business. And okay. so you'll be investing more in marketing, training, tools. All of the above. All right. of the hey, above. companies want to get into the enterprise, and the existing enterprise suppliers want to stay in the enterprise. Exactly. So, <laughs> exactly. It's a good time to be an arms dealer. <laughs> exactly. And we'll supply it with the Honda Cloud platform. Dan, thanks so much yeah. for sharing your insight here on the Cube. Really appreciate it. And great to meet your team and As well. everyone here. It's been fantastic. We are live here in Orlando. The theme is live here at SAP this year. And of course, we got the live coverage from the Cube. Uh, this is the Cube. I'm John Furrier, Peter Burris. We'll be right back. You're watching theCUBE.